This is a beginner's tutorial on basic navigation. It is not intended to discuss how to use the sails or to sail the ship itself, but navigation. I'm going to start a new game as if I was brand new. First, easy level. Now I'm going to do the first thing that they tell you to do, which is grab this. But you've already seen it probably. If you haven't, it's, val it's got useful information, including sailing techniques. I'm going to drop it. You start with just a compass. It's a very good compass, actually. And you start with this regional map. This is the local region that you start the, in the game in, assuming you use the beginner level. I'm not going to switch to a one where I can use the uh, mouse to show you things. We start here at Neverdee, about right here. Basic navigation at the beginning is dead reckoning only. Between inside a region, none of the navigational assistance tools will do anything more than tell you you're right somewhere in here. They're not that precise. Navigation within a region is usually within a one day sail of, each, of any destination. One day from here to here, one day from here to here, one day from here to here, even up to here. The only exceptions would be this here would probably take more like two days, but there's really no point in that kind of trip. You're not going to get many missions that would take you from these two islands to each other, and there's just far easier ways to make money than to do that. All regions have a one big island that can be seen from a considerable distance to help from navigation. In this region, Gold Rock City. Within a region, your best tactics for navigation would be dead reckoning. None of the, the only tool that is really of use is the compass. You can use dead reckoning, and you don't have to sail very far from here, which you will have in sight for the most, if not the entire journey. It will not take too long before you will have this island in sight, or this, or this, depending on which direction you go. Sometimes you will need to figure out which island you're looking for, and one of the best ways to do that, if say you're going to from Gold Rock City to Neverdean, sail towards this island. When you see it, you know Neverdean is south of it. So that'll help you find out which island you're actually looking for instead of just seeing islands out in the sea. And you're not entirely sure if that's the one you're looking for. If you sail the one that's easy to reach and then change course to the direction of the one you want, Neverdean or I'll kneel them. You will find it much easier to find the correct island, and you might add a little bit more to your journey, but that's normal in sailing. I mean, you'll tack into the wind quite considerably, which adds to your journey. This is for regional sailing, and you can start doing that, and you make some money, but to really make the money, you got to go long haul, which is... This is your region. See this nice little space right here? That's the entire region you just looked at. You can see everything here is within a day sail of each other. And the way over here is Dragon Cliffs, another region. Emerald Ar Ar Archipelago, however you pronounce it. Notice all this space in between. This is where navigation comes into it because you've got to reach here. You can try dead reckoning, guessing where you're at based on your speed and your car's course to reach it. Now, dead reckoning is a horrible way to go long distances because you got a good chance at just drifting northward or southward. You could drift north and not even realize it until you're all the way up here and then you're off to Timbuktu. Or you can drift southward until you start seeing penguins and polar bears. So, 
before trying to do this, you at least want to be able to do latitude navigation using either the quadrant or the sundial, preferably both. The quadrant can be used at night and the sundial during the day, and there are videos for that. And you can do latitude sailing, whereas if you stay on 31 degrees latitude, north-south, follow the uh, tools to keep on that latitude until you come into sight of land. Another, another way of using latitude sailing, if you're not ready for longitude, is say you want to go to Happy Bay. Start from here, and then you quickly sail north all the way up to latitude 35 then east to Happy Bay. Do not try and go directly to, like this, Happy Bay. Especially if you, if you don't have longitude information, if you haven't figured out how to get your longitude with the tools. If you try this, you will highly likely accidentally do this. You'll completely miss it, reach the latitude you were after, and then, because you're sailing east, you'll never see the destination, which was to your west. In ancient sailing days, they would often, if they were going to the Americas, they would sail from, say, England to New York, when their destination is Charleston. Then they would sail south along the course because, uh, coast because they knew their destination was south of where they reached land. You never aim directly for the destination in latitude sailing because you can never be sure if, you, uh, sure if you're north or south of the destination by the time you arrive, especially if it's a little old island. There are tools for figuring out your longitude, though, your east and west, and they're relatively easy, though they usually require a time element. You can use the chrono compass for a timepiece, and there's a video regarding that. Using that as a timepiece, there are two times you can get a very good position of your longitude. Noon, and at 1900. At noon, using the sundial, you see local noon using the sundial, and there's a video on how to do that, you would get your longitude and you would know if you're right here. And there's Milnead, and I'm probably mispronouncing it, at 1900, a star. And there's a video on that. And that will get you your longitude. And the chrono compass, once you know how to use it, can give you your longitude in a rough estimation all day long, as long as you got sunlight. So longitude navigation is not particularly hard in the or easy ways to do it if you're not able to use the chrono compass fully. You can use the time aspect of it without using the shadows or anything, just the time part, part of it, to get the rest of this information for longitude. All you need is the time of noon versus, uh, versus what where the shot, uh, shadow is. If the shadow is noon and your time reads a few minutes past noon, then you know you're over here somewhere. Or over here. And Milnes, or sorry, Milnead, if you use your quadrant on the star Milnead in the video, you can get your longitude at 1900 using the uh, timepiece, and all you need is the quadrant, and that gives you the exact degree of where you should you are at 19, 18, 17. But most of those tools will only be useful out here, out in the big open, not regionally. Regionally, they're not very useful. I'm also working out whether or not you can use the time of sunrise to get another point of reference for uh, where your latitude is in the morning, but I'm not quite sure I've got that ready yet, so I'll, that may be coming. And that one still requires the timepiece. Most of you will not have the timepiece to begin with, that's 5,000 plus gold. So you will do a latitude sale to Dragon Cliffs to make an insane amount of money so you can afford to buy the thing. I strongly recommend currently the uh, Chrono Compass 
in Gold Rock City. I have not seen the one in uh, Fort Aston, Astron. I have not seen it yet, but it, the uh, one in Gold Rock City, in my opinion, is superior to the one in Dragon Cliffs. Navigation with that, you can constantly keep an eye on where you're at and have some clue how far you are away you are from your destination. And you will know if you overshot it for some reason. Using that, using that, using uh, latitude sailing, you can reach Happy Bay okay. I would not recommend trying to go to Fort Astor. That's a long ways to go north and not drift around until maybe you end up over here. So you pretty much want to be able to do longitude and latitude position navigation before trying to make a sail of that journey. One of the tricks in navigation is storm weather. A lot of people will think they have to trim their sails constantly. You don't. Just get it about right. Okay, you're not in a race. Just get it about right. Sail along until you reach your destination. You don't have to constantly trim the sails. You're not in a race. In storm weather, you have another issue. You can actually sail too fast. These boats are not speed boats. They're not even really designed for harsh weather. They're designed to haul cargo. Sometimes not even very well at that, like the beginner boat. So if you've got a storm, you need to reduce sail. You don't want to pound your bow into the uh, into the waves until until you swamp and sink. So if you're in a two-masted boat, like the second one in the beginner level, I don't have a name for the boat. Maybe lower than a bow sail. For one thing, the bow sail helps push your nose further into the water. So sail on the back, sail on the aft uh, sail, and you'll go at a reduced speed, but you won't be pounding into the waves, and it'll be much easier to control. Cargo weight. Supposedly it's implemented. I don't know how well and I don't know how how exacting it is. General rule of thumb, heavy cargo should be near the rear of the boat or the middle. You do not want to put the two chests of gold I currently got in the nose of the boat along with some copper. I actually have them in my captain's cabin in the rear of the boat so that the nose will ride higher in the water and not uh, submerge in a wave. Always distribute cargo weight so that you don't overload it. You don't want all your cargo on the starboard side or the port side, or in the bow, or even necessarily the stern. You want to spread it out and put the heavy stuff centered to aft to avoid, to avoid problems with the nose of the boat. You can also even use cargo as ballast weight in a pinch. If you're leaning heavily and you can't lose any more sail, then maybe move cargo towards the windward side to help hold the boat in, in the uh, more level. However, this is a uh, emergency effort and I would personally recommend just changing course. Sometimes just change course so you sail more into the wind and that will reduce the uh, push that uh, tilts your boat over. You can always you can always adjust later on. You don't have to hold you don't have to hold a straight course for a destination. In most cases you can't. So you use tactics to control how much the wind is affecting your boat. You don't want you don't want it pushing you over and sinking your boat halfway to the destination. If you have to take a little longer to get there, so be it. You're a sailboat, not a uh, speedboat. It's not a timed race. One little navigational trick I learned early on is sometimes getting into a harbor can be challenging. The, end, or the wind keeps going 
east to west. Well, if you're coming out of here or here, you're reaching this, you got to tack into the wind, zigzagging through here to get into the harbor. Well, maybe what you want to do is just go around, come at it from this direction or this direction. I mean, it's personal preference on how much you can tack into the wind. It also depends on the exact direction of the wind. But it'll help keep you from going into irons, where the wind is strictly at your nose and you can't turn the boat either way. That's very hard to get out of. Trust me, I've done it a few times. So, sometimes going around the island is best. And islands you don't know, you probably don't want to approach at night. If you've never been there, because you won't know where the harbor is. For instance, uh, I know the harbor is right here in this in this island. However, just yesterday, like I said, the day before, I went into uh, Dragon Cliffs, and I had no clue where the island was, where, where the uh, harbor was, and it was in the middle. Getting in there, I had to wait for daytime. Hope some of this information helps you, and if you have questions, feel free to leave them and ask. Hmm.